Jack Smith, the prosecutor, special counsel who's been trying to get Donald Trump uh, since Donald Trump left office. Uh, remember, he's this guy. He's very good at getting maybe initial convictions and dirtying politicians up and then getting reversed on appeal. In this case, he brought charges against Donald Trump that ultimately the U.S. Supreme Court said you could not even bring against people who entered the Capitol illegally. So even those who trespassed, even those who did knowingly break law, could not be charged with these crimes of of obstructing Congress. Yet Jack Smith tries to put those two charges back in. So what we have is this filing document post the Supreme Court case that, that made that decision. And in this filing document, Jack Smith is saying, this is what I think I could still bring against Donald Trump. Just 33 days left until the general election. There's no way it's going to happen. It's unprecedented, number one, because you have a Department of Justice policy that says, you know, when, you, when you're getting within you know, 60, 90 days of a general election or even an election generally, you, you don't try to put your thumb on the scale by, you know, basically unleashing a document here in the form of a brief that eviscerates one, or try attempts to eviscerate one of the candidates for president of the United States. Here's the problem. I read the whole thing, Logan, last night, cover to cover, all 165 pages. It's nonsense. You can't be indicted for these things. This can't be a crime for a president. So that's the problem with all of this. And he's still stretching so desperately to try to make this case work that it's really a sign of desperation. This is just what Jack Smith would like to bring, and there's still going to be motions and challenges to it, including the judge's own questions, the Trump team's own questions, and probably Jack Smith's rebuttal to the Trump team's questions. And this is all before we even go to an actual case. You're exactly correct. So here's what this is. This Remember what the document is. This is a brief supporting their what's called superseding indictment. They had to redo the indictment because most of what they relied on, the Supreme Court in a six to three opinion said you can't do. You can't bring in testimony from the president's advisors and try to use that against him as far as an unofficial act goes. And, I, you know, look, Jeff Tubin on CNN last night said, and I think he's right, but this is really stretching it. And as I said earlier, I think this is an act of desperation for a prosecutor that's trying to justify his existence as his whole world is about is, is imploded. He's lost every major appellate issue. I mean, look, Chuck Kinnett should not have released this. In my view, that was a mistake. But she was overturned by the Supreme Court. So let's not let's realize where this is coming from. This is a political hit piece. It's Washington, D.C., with a judge who probably doesn't love Donald Trump. So is going to try their best to see if they can somehow figure out, even after the Trump team puts forward their objections. And let me go through the timetable for you real quick. So this gets filed last night. Uh, the It gets unsealed. It gets filed on the 26th. He files to have it unsealed with redactions. And there are redactions made. A lot of those are people's names. Uh, so on October, now those redactions will not remain once this is actually, if this actually gets to be filed. So October, but he said, can we can we at least release publicly the evidence that we have so the so we people so the know American people can see so the American people can see the criminal case we're about to bring, as including the defendant. That's not usually what you do, okay? But they file that October second, uh, October second Cubs, in the last evening that it gets unsealed. So they got what they wanted. Chutkin knows and Jack Smith knows that not, none of this will be fully determined by election day. So, even if Judge Chutkin were to read through this, read through those Supreme Court decisions, and ultimately come to a conclusion that none of this can be brought against President Trump, that will not come out until likely after the election, if he was vindicated that way. Certainly, a trial won't begin. And none of this had to be made public. But Jack Smith requested for it to be made public. So, are these people really seeking equal justice under law? Or are they just Democrat legal hacks committing the lawfare that we've been preaching against happening internationally that has now unfortunately crept into the U.S. political system, Logan? Yep. And that makes us whew, not much better than a lot of developing world countries will say it that way. It just reeks obvious of political uh, interference. I mean, there's no other way around it. When you look at 
the way it all lines up, it's saying, well, we're not going to be able to have an answer till when? Well, October 2nd. And then, okay, what about when's next? Okay, maybe late October, you know, maybe into the week of the, of the last week of October. So I don't know, the next Tuesday, uh, there will be a general election, uh, one of which of these is the candidate. Uh, there are moments in time and in history and politics where you go, man, you can't believe that something like this is happening. And I feel like this is one of those moments, Jordan. But of course, it's not all that shocking anymore because this just seems to be now the normal. The normal is uh, playing politics uh, with real serious uh, elections. For me, we have to have common sense voices in Washington, D.C. If you don't have uh, common sense voices, then you get this swampy type voices of people who live and work in Washington, D.C., and they just want Washington, D.C. to be bigger, badder, better and and more funded. And and I don't want that. And I don't think the American people want that. These are the, what he would like to bring, the charges he would like to yeah. bring. And by the way, this is now available to the public to read all, what, 190? I mean, it's a lot of pages. It's a real thick 186 document. 186 pages, yeah. That really outlines a lot of hearsay, a, a lot of nothing. Everything is uh, uh, alleged. Yeah, alleged. And the American people were, can see right through that. What they've done to Donald Trump in terms of taking him to court, trying to crush him, bankrupt him, uh, put him in prison, shoot, try to shoot him, all of these things are because the left says these nasty things like, oh, he's a threat to democracy or he's Hitler. If, if someone is truly a threat to America and a threat to democracy, then unstable, mentally ill people are going to hear that and try to take action because they hear that that's a permission slip to kill someone. I, I think that we've got to tone down the rhetoric. We got to be able to listen without saying, "Oh, I want to fact check you because I'm the author of facts." And and you know, when you're having a debate about opinion, I, I think we've got to get back to the place where you can disagree calmly and defend yourself. You're a better person if you can figure out how to do that. Jack Smith uh, believes that there was no presidential immunity for official or unofficial acts. Remember, that's where he started. No immunity. And instead, the Supreme Court said absolute immunity So uh, for official acts. So I think the, the reality is Jack Smith is, and you're right, there was the second case, the Fisher case, where the Supreme Court said, no, that January 6th law doesn't, that, that the indictment doesn't work for that kind of action. It has to be destruction of evidence and so forth. I, when you take those together, Jordan and Logan, I think that's it. But he won't stop. So in 34 days, we'll know, I think, where this litigation goes because we'll know where the election is. We should have a general idea anyways.